Fox Sports. We are the Fox. We are Ohio. Los Angeles, the city of angels, and since 1958, home of the Dodgers. Born in Brooklyn, the team that won star Jackie Robinson has also featured famous nicknames like Pee Wee, Campy, and the Duke. But since their move west nearly 60 years ago, pitching has been the Dodgers' calling card. Colfax, Drysdale, and Fernando Mania all delivered championships to L.A. And Oral Hershiser authored the Dodgers' last title story over a quarter century ago. Two teams dreaming of a return to glory. Meet in Chavez Ravine next on Sports Time Ohio. Nestled into Chavez Ravine, Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles tonight. The Indians invade for interleague play as the Tribe takes on the Dodgers for just the seventh game in interleague history. Hi again, everyone. Matt Underwood alongside Rick Manning. It is kind of unusual that Cleveland and L.A. have only met six times since the inception of interleague play back in the mid to late 1990s. But, you know, Rick, this is an interesting matchup because you've got a Dodgers club that a year ago, Starting on June 22nd, they went on a run where they won 42 out of 50, and some folks are wondering, are they going to do it again? Well, they're certainly on the run right now. When you look over their last 16 games, their record's 12-4. and four. You can look at these numbers here and say 4.3 runs a game. They're doing it with their pitching. Over 30 games, they have two or less walks that they've allowed. They've got Kershaw on a 28 consecutive shutout inning streak, and they've got a, they are rolling as a ball club right now. They're they're back. They've won eight out of ten to go to 500 at home. So they could be on one of those rolls right there. Hopefully. For a brief three-game stint, maybe the Indians can win two out of three. Well, it's amazing, too. The Dodgers have trimmed off the nine-and-a-half-game deficit to run down San Francisco, and they did that in just 22 days. All right, when we come back, we're going to take a look at tonight's pitching matchup. Corey Kluber will take the rubber for the Tribe to try to slow down Dodger Blue. That's right ahead.
by McDonald's. I'm loving it. Buy your local Toyota dealers. Visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Buy Panini's. Get overstuffed at Panini's Bar and Grill. And buy Jeep. Visit jeep.com to learn more. The Indians' last trip to Dodger Stadium here in Los Angeles was six years ago back in 08. And the Indians are back again as they open up tonight's series against L.A. Corey Kluber will be on the hill for the Tribe. Pitched a dynamite ball game his last time out earlier on this road trip. And he's 3-0 and in interleague play this year. And Corey Kluber, he got it rolling. He is so good with his cutter, his slider, his breaking ball. If teams haven't seen him before, they've got their work cut out for him. But Kluber this year has made five stars after an Indians loss. He is 4-0 and and the ERA just over two. So he's been very, very good for the Indians. I think they need him to toe the rubber tonight. He'll be matched up against the veteran Dan Heron, who's having a nice year his own self. 7-4, 383 earned run average, four and three in his career he's not the guy that throws as hard as he once did but he's still a very smart pitcher big game for the indians tonight because they've lost the first game in each of the first two series on this road trip we know that when the indians win the first game series that usually bodes well for them in the series we've got the play-by-play coming up next as terry francona's gang invades dodger stadium in los angeles we'll see if the tribe can get the offense rolling tonight against dodger blue the play-by-play is next to buy your northern ohio honda dealers by the cleveland clinic call today for an appointment today and by the northeast ohio ford dealers what else would you expect but a perfect night here in los angeles as the indians and the dodgers renew their rivalry here this evening on the mound for Los Angeles, right-hander Dan Heron. And while he warms up, we'll give you Terry Francona's starting lineup. Brought to you by Progressive. Michael Bourne will lead it off. Then is Dribble Cabrera, followed by Michael Brantley. Carlos Santana, Jason Kipnis, and Lonnie Chisnall in the middle. Jan Gomes, David Murphy, and the pitcher Corey Kluber will bat ninth. Our GMC starting pitcher will be Dan Heron tonight. Heron is uh, 33 years old. Signed to a one-year deal here in Los Angeles. In his career, 4-3 and three and 12 career starts against the Indians. He's having a nice year. He is 7-4, 383 earned run average. Fits in nicely to this rotation. Last time he faced the Indians, July 3rd, 2012, as a member of the Angels, the Indians roughed him up for seven runs in four and a third innings. And his first pitch of the night is a little bit low. Ball one.
Game time temperature 69 degrees. It cools down quite rapidly here in Los Angeles because we had a high temperature then low 80s. Pitch a little bit outside. Yeah, for Heron, only 18 walks in his 96 in the third innings. And Bourne shoots it back out of play. Bourne on the road trip, eight hits and 24 at bats. He has two doubles, two triples, and two runs batted in. Low and a full count. One thing Bourne doesn't do a lot of and never really has is walk. He has drawn just 16 walks on the year. Bouncer foul. Mentioned this during our appearance earlier today on Indians Live. Dodgers starting pitchers have walked two or fewer batters in 33 consecutive games. Bounced on the right side of the infield. D. Gordon will throw out Bourne one away. Let's check the key at defense for the Dodgers. They've been playing outstanding defense. They ended a streak of nine straight games without an error yesterday. It'll be Kemp in left field, Ethier in center, Puig is in right. It'll be Uribe at third, Rojas at short, Gordon is at second, Gonzalez at first with Ellis behind the plate. Take a look at the umpires tonight. Angel Hernandez working the plate. Larry Vanover is, I believe, at second base. Adrian Johnson is at first and Paul Nauert down at third. They jumbled the uh, umpire rotation up just before the start of tonight's game. As Dribble Cabrera batting 248 on the year. He is just one for 17 on this road trip. Had the day off yesterday in the series finale against Seattle. And a one hopper to first. Gonzalez will take it himself. Two down. Our keys to the game brought to you by Akron Children's Hospital. For Corey Kluber, who has historically done well against the National League, you look for more of that. And for the Indians offensively, take advantage of any mistake Dan Heron makes. That streak for the Dodgers. The starting pitchers having walked two or fewer in 33 straight games. That's the longest streak by a National League team in 100 years. Now we know because of facing them so many times that Minnesota under Rick Anderson, their talented pitching coach, they pound the strike zone. They abhor the walk. And back in 05, they had a 36-game streak. Yeah, that's impressive. Where they didn't walk more than two batters. You can see that real uh, slow hesitation with Heron, something that he didn't have, I would say, a couple of years ago. He really slows it down, almost like an Asian pitcher where he'll set, and then all of a sudden he comes rushing at you, but very deliberate into his setup. A little bit outside with it. Two balls and a strike. Michael Brantley. Got off to a good start on the road trip, but just one for 10 against Seattle pitching. Since May 1st, though, he has been one of the toughest guys to shut down for opposing pitchers. Well, and it was yesterday where Hernandez ended up walking Brantley in the first, a guy that doesn't walk a lot of guys, and here's Heron behind him in a 3-1 count. Finds the strike zone to run the count full. Just underway here at Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles. The payoff pitch. Brantley fouls it out of play. 
Ran a fastball up a letter high. It was borderline. Tough pitch to take if you're Michael Brantley. And again, the 3-2 offering. And this time, an off-speed pitch. He just got a piece of it. Yeah, it looked like a really slow changeup. All time, the Dodgers have won four of the six matchups between these two teams. And a bouncing ball towards second base. Gordon has it. He'll throw him out. The Indians go one, two, three to start the game. And now the Dodgers are coming to bat when we come back. Judy. Los Dodgers brought to you by Toyota. D. Gordon will lead it off. Yasiel Puig batting second. Then it's Adrian Gonzalez. Matt Kemp cleanup. Andre Ethier fifth. Juan Uribe sixth. Then it's A.J. Ellis, Miguel Rojas, and Dan Heron will hit ninth. GMC starting pitchers Corey Klober, seven and five this year, coming off a win in Arizona. Seven innings, four hits, struck out eight, and only walked one. And he is 3 0 this year in interleague play, 6 0 in his career. So we'll see what Kluber has for the Dodgers. First time he has ever faced the Los Angeles Dodgers. And a pitch outside, ball one. You know, it's the second straight team that the Indians are catching having a very good month of June. We left Seattle. They played very well. The Dodgers as well. They picked it up 17 and 10 in the month of June. Now D Gordon is a big reason for the Dodgers recent offensive surge. He's been swinging the bat well. This will be a deep fly to center for out number one. See the key of defense for the Indians behind Kluber tonight. It's Brantley in left, Bourne in center making that play. Murphy is in right. Chisenhall at third, Cabrera at short. Kipnis is at second, Santana at first. Jan Gomes doing the catching. One of the most talked about young players in the game, Yasiel Puig. Currently sixth in the National League with a 312 average. To say he's an energetic player would be quite the understatement. Well, he's a very aggressive hitter. I know that. He likes to swing the bat, and Kluber, a guy that likes to throw strikes. I'm surprised he was taking the first pitch, to be honest with you. One and one to count. Puig's not just aggressive, though, Rick. He is. Uh, 
I think in baseball terms, he's sometimes reckless with the way he runs the bases. And yeah, he can be. But he claims that's the way you had to play in Cuba. He said if you were on first base and the hitter bunted, you had to get to third. That was your job. You just keep running until you get there. Well, you'd rather see a guy be over aggressive. You can always try and reel him in, and the Dodgers have been trying to do that. He Look just reached that. out, punched it into right field, a base hit. And that was a great pitch because you could tell by the swing from Quig, he just stayed on it and just hit it off the end of the bat and flared it into right field. This had to be off the plate. There's not anything you can do with the pitch right there. Good job by Kluber, and look at the swing. And that's where you tip your cap and say, nice job of hitting, young man. So he's at first with one out now for Adrian Gonzalez. Gonzalez, 14th in the National League in home runs with 13. But he is fifth in runs batted in. He has driven in 50. Yeah, and a season for him, you don't see the batting average down at 250. And I think uh, one of the things, one of the reasons why is because of the shift that a lot of these teams are playing against him now. Yesterday against St. Louis, he even bunted a ball down the third baseline because it was vacated down there just for a base hit. Indians keep chiseling all over there to dissuade him from doing that. Kluber missing up high. It's 2-0. and oh. Drive dugout. Dodgers hitting coach is Mark McGuire in his second year with LA. Dodgers are third in the National League in doubles. And they're second in walks, which tells you that you think of them swinging the bats and being aggressive, but they will also. Not chase a lot of bad pitches at times. Swing and a miss, it's two and two. And while Dodger Stadium has never been a home run hitter's paradise, as a team, they are third in the National League in extra base hits. Well, you said it right at, at, at the outset. It cools down here in a hurry. So once that sun gets down, the ball doesn't carry as much. You've got to get them, try and get them in the first couple innings unless you really juice one. 2-2 pitch, runner goes, and it's fouled out of play. Puig had a full head of steam, and he was charging hard down that's, into second base. That's like a middle linebacker coming at you. If he goes into second base and you're having a cover on a throw and he comes in head first, try and get on the side because he can run you right over. Six three, two 235 pounds. Over firing over to first base to keep an eye on Puig now. With two strikes, Indians have the, the shift on. Chisholm all over near shortstop now. And a swing and a miss. Kluber strikes him out, two down. Corey Kluber with his 123rd strikeout on the year. He's among the league no leaders in, in strikeouts. Well, he just threw two by him is what he did. He got strike two by him, too, with a fastball away. So Gonzalez comes up empty, the first strikeout for Kluber. Kluber struck out at least five. And each of his starts against the National League. Back 
back out of play. Matt Kemp for a time there was sort of the uh, forgotten Dodger. But having a solid season to this point since June 6th. He's been on a tear batting 358 with three home runs and 16 runs batted in. Well, they have usually have the uh, odd man out. They had the four outfielders. Crawford is the one that's uh, that's out injured now so they've got the three Ethier and Kemp and Puig. Seemed like Kemp was a little irritated at, at the crowded nature of the Dodgers outfield, but you can hardly blame the organization given that he's only played in 73 games uh, last year due to three different DL trips, hamstring, left shoulder problem, right. sprained left ankle. Well, with Don Mattingly, that's why four. I mean, you're going to rotate him, and Crawford's had his share of injuries yeah. in his career. So, you know, Puig's going to be out there every day. Ethier is... Uh, he may not be having the years he was earlier in his career, but they figured they needed four. At that time, there was a lot of trade talk that they would get rid of one of those outfielders yeah. to make room for for somebody, but it hasn't happened. Puig, the runner at first base with two down. And the one one to Kemp is fouled off down the right side. Now would be a, a, a time for Puig to, to run here. One two count with Kemp at the plate. I would think you'd have a pretty good chance of getting a slider from Kluber here. And if you're going to throw it, you'd want to keep it down in the zone. Gomes looking over, getting his sign from the bench. So let the games begin. No. Nope. Down right back. Davy Lopes coaching at first base for Los Angeles. He's got the stopwatch keeping an eye on Kluber and his move to home play. You talk about a base stealer in his day. He right. stole 77 bases back in 1975 yeah. for L.A. A terrific base stealer. And everywhere he has coached, he has uh, had successful guys stealing bases. He knows exactly what to look for, about as good as there is in the game. The one two the runner goes Kemp pulls it to third it's fair Chisinau long throw across got him and the inning is over no runs ahead and a man left and after one no score in Los Angeles.
Carlos Santana will lead off for the Indians. Let's go down to Katie with him. Katie, ever since Carlos came back from that seven-day trip to the DL, he has been locked in offensively. What's been the difference? Yeah, he really has been, Matt. And for him, he says it's been a mental adjustment. He went on to say the batting cages are like his second home. And at the beginning of the season, he really just put too much pressure on himself. What changed was when he had about an hour-long conversation on the phone with Red Sox hitter David Ortiz. The message, Matt, was simple. If your mechanics are good, all you have to do is believe in yourself. And to Carlos Santana, he said that's made all the difference. Well, sometimes it, a little positive uh, encouragement or reinforcement right. from somebody that you uh, respect and admire goes a long way. Not that your coaches aren't probably telling you the same thing, I, but they are. You know, You're right. I, they are. They tell you the exact same thing. It's sometimes you hear it from somebody different. That's all. You know, it's like. When you're a young kid, you don't listen to your dad, but you listen to somebody else. Tell you the same exact thing, right? right? Yeah. Santana falls behind here, one and two. It is amazing though how long he was in a slump for before making adjustments. That 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 is sort of mind-boggling to me, but he has turned it around and he's got a, a long way to go. You know, when you start off, you just try and put it out of your mind. You you have to forget, however long it was, and let's say the first two months. You have to have a short memory. Now the 2 2. Broke his bat. And Heron will flip it for out number one. All right, let's take a look at the uh, updated results for the All Star game for the American League. And Mike Trout still trailing Jose Batista by several hundred thousand there. And Matt Weider still leading at the catching position. You know, Terry Francona was saying that he thinks Jan Gomes deserves consideration, but he said, you know, I understand how the process works, but he said, you know, he's done a nice job. And defensively, he's gotten better this year. But, uh, you know, Matt Weider is, is running away with it, even though he's been hurt. He hasn't played much. Remember, you can vote online for the All-Star Game through July 3rd, and Fox is the exclusive home for the Midsummer Classic at Target Field. Coverage will begin at 7.30 p.m. on Fox. Jason Kipnis is called out on strikes by Angel Hernandez. Two down. Tune in for all the All-Star events July 14th. The Home Run Derby live on ESPN at 8 and on July 15th. It's the All-Star game itself on Fox. There's Lonnie Chisinau. Batting 350 on the year. He's hit in his last four straight games. Dan Heron featuring three ground ball outs, make it four ground ball outs and a, and a strikeout out of his first five. And he's not throwing anything like he used to. He would cut it, he'd throw into the mid 90s. He's right around 87, 88 now, tops, but he's got a good changeup. Trying to master the art of. Deception. Well, that's that's the thing. We we had talked about this before, where pitchers go from power pitchers to learning how to pitch, and you know, just getting an 88 mile an hour fastball by you inside, he shows you in there, and you know, it's not an easy thing to do for a lot of pitchers, and the ones that can that can do it, you have to you have to look at it and say that's that's a great job. They have to put their ego behind them. Chisholm drives one to right field, but. Yasiel Puig is there to make the catch, and the Indians go one, two, three. Middle of the second, no score in LA.
Bottom of the second inning. Andre Ethier going to lead off for L.A. Then Juan Uribe and A.J. Ellis. Andre Ethier batting just 248 on the year. First base side. We were talking about Davy Lopes last inning earlier this month. Ethier passed Lopes for eighth place on the Dodgers all time hit list. It's funny because we don't play the Dodgers very often. You forget how long some of these guys have worn the Dodger blue. Yeah, now. Ethier came to uh, the Dodgers from the Oakland organization. I remember years ago, Vaughn Hayes, guy that used to manage in the Oakland organization, had this kid at Double A and telling me this kid's going to be a really good player for a while. And if I'm not mistaken, I think he came for the Dodgers for Milton Bradley. I could be wrong. And it's a called strike. <laughs> Traded to the Dodgers in 05. For Milton Bradley and Antonio Perez. That's what I thought. Just a bit outside and able to lay off a tough pitch there. Two and two. Yeah, that's a nice breaking ball away that a lot of left-handers will, will uh, you know, they'll, they'll take it. Boy, that's a tough one to take. You give up on it is what you do because you don't think it's going to come in that much. Good pitch. Got in on him. It's to center field, but playable for Michael Bourne. One away. The injury report tonight brought to you by the attorneys at Elk and Elk. And if you look at Los Angeles and their injuries, we've talked about Carl Crawford, Sean Figgins, and Justin Turner. Hard to believe Figgins is still playing. Yeah. But for the most part, they're. Relatively a healthy bunch. A healthy bunch with a healthy payroll. Ooh. The highest paid team in baseball. Juan Uribe. Uribe, we remember from his days with the White Sox, yes. never met a pitch he didn't like seemingly. <laughs> That's true, especially a high fastball. That is true. Strike called. It's one on one. Seems kind of strange when you talk about the Los Angeles Dodgers. One of the faces of their organization now as a part owner is Magic Johnson. And he is he is Showtime. He is the Los Angeles Lakers. Oh yeah. And yet he's a part owner of the Dodgers. Uh huh. They've uh, started renovations and doing a lot of different things in this ballpark. Swing and a miss, and down goes Uribe. Second strikeout for Corey Kluber. Two down here in the second inning. And now for a Mazda game break. Back to the studios. Here's Al Pulaski. Wow. That is a meltdown for Oakland. How about that? Four to one. The Grand Salami walk off. From Rajay Davis, not the guy you're right. really expecting yeah. to go deep. Well, I don't know if he started or he pinch hit, but he's he usually hits number nine in that lineup.
Now the 0 1 pitch. Downstairs. Redbird telling me he was leading off tonight. The Red Sox, the Boston Red Sox were almost no hit at home tonight. But Jake Arietta, Arietta into the Cubs. eighth inning. And one out of the eighth. Speaking of no hitters. Oh. That guy pitched yesterday. He's on a consecutive 28 consecutive shutout inning streak going right now. He was only 6 and 0 in the month of June and an ERA of under 1. Maybe it's a good thing he didn't pitch against the Indians. Kluber's 2 2 offering. Bounce to third base. Lonnie Chisnell, long throw across. And a good throw gets him. The Dodgers go one, two, three. Through two, no score in LA. That'll be courtesy of First Energy. Take place Tuesday, July 8th, when the New York Yankees will be in town. The last time Derek Jeter will make his uh, trip into Cleveland. Visit Indians.com for your tickets. For the tribe here in inning number three, the bottom third of the order coming up. Jan Gomes, David Murphy, and Corey Kluber. In his last 22 games, John Gomes batting at a 277 clip, so 10 points higher than his overall season average. Well, and when he's been getting the bulk of the catching behind the plate every day, not a bad day to have off yesterday when you were facing King Felix and he one hits you. That's a, a good one to set. One and one to count. On a broken gets, bat. He gets inside on those guys. That's 88 miles an hour. One away. And we go down to Katie with our Here Right Audiology sounds of the game. Well, Matt, it's hard to believe that it is already halfway through the season. Today marks the 82nd game. David Murphy earlier today told me not only does he believe in this group, but reevaluates the first half of the season. 
talent is definitely here in this clubhouse. Uh, we love this group of guys. We love what we have. I think, um, I think all around we would all like to see just a little bit more consistency. Um, when we get on those hot streaks and we play well, um, you know, we, it's almost like we feel invincible and, uh, and we feel like we're going to win every single day. And then all of a sudden uh, you hit a rough patch and then, you know, you go on a little losing streak and uh, it gets rough here and there, but that's the game of baseball. So I think um, consistent play is the main thing on, in all aspects. You know. Now David Murphy and the Indians all searching for it. Murphy himself. I mean, he was as locked in as anybody in this lineup for the first two months of the season. But boy, the bottom has fallen out for him in the month of June. Well, he was one of the best uh, run producers for him early in the year in April and going into May between him and uh, Michael Brantley. Just Brantley has maintained, and this is where Murphy has fallen off. Just one RBI in his last 14 games for David Murphy. And you see the batting average of up 90. Upstairs with it. He draws the walk and the Indians have their first base runner. A rarity. Great clip of the game. Corey Kluber in his last start in Arizona. A line drive single to left field. He will not embarrass himself. I'm surprised Tito's hitting him ninth. I thought he'd be in that sixth, fifth or sixth spot tonight. He squares. And a bunch. boy. It's a job. job well done. That's what you have to do. Well done. Move the runner along. Two down now and a runner in scoring position. And that's what you do. When you're a National League pitcher, and I was watching those guys take batting practice today. I'm talking about the Dodgers pitchers. When you're an American League pitcher and you have an opportunity to get into an interleague game and do something, this is what you have to do. If you get a guy on, get him into scoring position. Give your teammates a chance to get him in. Whether it works out or not, it doesn't matter. But that can keep you in the game a lot longer. If he's pitching a good game and it's a low scoring game, you get a guy on and the manager knows you can bunt, he'll leave you up there and not pinch hit for you. Mm -hmm. And that gives you an opportunity to win more games when you can do that in the National League style baseball. Now the Indians looking for a two out RBI hit. Michael Bourne takes the strike to even the count. Bourne a 283 hitter with runners in scoring position this year. Yeah, he's been able to get some big hits. I think last year at the, after the All-Star break, he was one of the better clutch hitters that the Indians had in the second half of the year. You don't expect him. He's, he's leading off as like an RBI guy, but given the opportunity, the bottom part of the lineup can get on. He can do it very well. The one two is in the dirt, nicely blocked. To 2 2. Right back up the middle. Oh. Diving stop by Rojas. And he's out at first. It's a close play, though. Sandy Alamore says, Hey, Skip, come on out. Let's take another look yeah. at this one. I'll tell you what, Borney said the same thing. That shortstop, Rojas, made a tremendous play. And he's going to hang out and he's going to talk to him right now. He's looking for uh, the video clearance here. And they're going to look at it. They're going to look at it to see if they can keep it going. He saved a run. Oh, I think he beats it, too. And then you know what? He might have beat it, but he certainly saves a run. And Tito's going to challenge it. Let's see. He, yeah, he beats it. He beats it. I agree. That call, it, it will be a Cleveland challenge. And I think they will overturn it. Bourne said as soon as he got the first, no, no, yeah. no, I was safe. And the last time he did that, if you remember, we were in Chicago when he was picked off. And he was right. So we'll see. Yeah, this shouldn't take long because it's pretty clear evidence that the foot's down before the ball's in the glove. It's, it's close, but it is close. But it sir looks like it looked like it 
from that angle that we saw that he was safe. And let's see, the headset's coming off. Larry Vanover on Here your right come. is the crew chief. Right. He should be safe. Yes, he is. It's overturned. Now Murphy will be at third base. Boy, but he did take an, a run. Michael Bourne gets the base hit with a runner in scoring position. Unfortunately, he doesn't score. You know, Rojas did a terrific job yep. to get to it. And he almost threw him out, if not for the speed of Bourne. Right. You know, anytime you, you have that situation, two out, runner in the second base, they tell the infielders to knock it down. He almost did it one better. <laughs> you saw Michael Bourne giving Adrian Johnson some good natured grief down there at first. So the Indians have him at the corners now with two down four as Drupal Cabrera. And he swings at the first pitch, comes up empty. Now, for whatever reason, I don't know if it's just one of those years. But as Dribble Cabrera, these are the situations that have been his kryptonite. He is one for 33 this year. Yeah, a runner in scoring position and two outs. And that one hit came in, I think, a 10 to 1 ball game. It was a, a lopsided ball game. It's unfortunate because those hits are golden when you can get them as a player. Bourne takes off. He Looking to get in the scoring position, and that's he will. Good. That's a good idea. Get yourself in the scoring position for Michael Bourne. That's his seventh stolen base. Especially in that count. Now it's one two count. A base hit can score two here. I like that. So second and third with two down. And the one two to Cabrera. And he's out on strikes. No runs, a hit, two men left. Still no score. Inning. No score here in Los Angeles. Reminder as you enjoy a cold one to stay tuned later in the game for Miller time. Brought to you by Miller Light. Number eight hitter Miguel Rojas will lead off for Los Angeles and the pitcher Dan Heron. Followed by D. Gordon. He can put uh, a run in the RBI column for Rojas for saving a run last inning for Dan Heron. Oh, 
Upstairs, ball one. Corey Kluber with two strikeouts here tonight. He began the evening with 122 strikeouts. And according to Stats Inc., since 1914, he's on a very short list of Indians pitchers who have struck out 120 through the team's first 81 games. That list would include Bob Feller, who did it six times. Sudden Sam McDowell, who did it five times. Gaylord Perry did it three times. Herb score twice. And then you've got Louis Tiant and now Corey Kluber, who have each done it once. 120 strikeouts to the team's first 81 games. Corey began the night sixth in the American League in strikeouts. Dan Heron has five hits on the year in 30 at bat, so he can handle it okay. Puts it in play, but foul. Lorenzo Bundy, the third base coach, will hand that to a young fan. And now Kluber goes back to work going two on Heron. Fastball painted the outside corner and Heron is out staring. Third strikeout for Kluber two down here in the third inning. And we'll go down to the top of the order. Well time is running out to vote for your 2014 MLB all stars. You can help send your favorite Indian like Michael Brantley to the all star game by voting up to 35 times at Indians.com. You vote exclusively at Indians.com or on your mobile phone. Voting ends Thursday, July 3rd at 11.59 p.m. That's Eastern Time. D. Gordon fly to center is only time up. And a strike is called. It's 0 and 2. Gordon not in agreement with Angel Hernandez. Now Corey's two strike pitch. And that's a wicked movement on it. Count stays 0 and 2. Kluber looking for that outside corner but can't get the call. And the 2 2 offering is a little bit inside. So for D. Gordon, a good at bat after he was down 0 2. Pitch bounce to second. Fitness throws him out. The Dodgers go one, two, three, and that's eight straight retired by Corey Kluber.
SportsOhio.com. Why having Corey Kluber on the mound against one set of teams in particular has paid dividends for the Indians. Find out which veteran the Browns are looking to ink to a contract extension and what will the Columbus Blue Jackets do in NHL free agency. Get complete coverage of all today's action involving Ohio sports on FoxSportsOhio.com. Michael Brantley, Carlos Santana, and Jason Kipnis for the Indians here in the fourth. And it's a first pitch strike from Heron. to the count. Right back at him. And Heron knocks it down. Well, he, he did a nice job of keeping the glove right there. It looked like he did get leather on it. He saw it coming. A lot of times those pitchers fall off and they're, uh, they're not in very good fielding position, but watch him. He sees it coming all the way and he was able to keep his glove right there, at least knock it down and recover to get Brantley. So one gone for Carlos Santana. Santana hit a broken bat comebacker to the mound his first time up. Dodgers don't employ quite the uh, exaggerated shift that we see a lot of times for Santana. And isn't it funny because you're, you're you're facing a guy that's not even throwing 90 miles an hour and they're not over there as far as we normally look at him pull that pitch. That's over there dug on the first base side. That's how far out in front of that pitch he was. But rarely will you see a ball hit up there. Two and two. Back out of play. Ball disappeared down into the dirt. Santana lays off and a full count. That's hit hard to center field, but right into the tracks of Andre Ethier. Two down. Our stat of the game is brought to you by Buick. Clayton Kershaw finishing the month of June with a perfect 6 and 0 record and an ERA of 082. Yeah. Well, but when you go 28 scoreless, that'll do that. Yeah, four walks and 61 strikeouts. That's uh, an impressive month. He just seems to be getting better and better every year. Corey Kluber in the month of May had 60 strikeouts and eight walks. Right. And 4 0. But the, the Dodgers have an opportunity to have three starting pitchers with 10 wins before the All Star break. Yeah, that's. You know, Kershaw, he has nine. Granke already has 10. And we'll see Ryu. On Wednesday, he has nine. There's the no hitter he threw against Colorado here. 15 punch outs in that ball game. The 
second Dodger no hitter this year. Kipnis is following it back. Yeah, it's going to be tough for them. They're going to be in it the rest of the way, just the way they're starting to pitch. We told you about that streak they ran off last year, starting in June, 42 and 8. Another foul back by Kipnis. Zach Greinke. Well, he's really riding the letters on Kipnis here, keeping it just above the hitting hot spot. In the dirt. And then changes that eye level with an off speed pitch like a changeup. Takes a call, third strike over the inside corner. And the inning is over. The Indians are retired in order for the third time in four innings. And we still have no score in LA. Well, it's another Sugardale Dollar Dog Night that will all take place Friday, July 4th. The Indians will host the Kansas City Royals. Dollar Dogs during the game, fireworks after the game. You can visit Indians.com for your tickets. Dodger Dogs, a staple here in Los Angeles. I'm sure in another inning, Q will be to make sure that you, we have a, a Dodger dog here. We should at least try it. They right? come out in the fifth, correct? Yeah. Well, so that's I, his job, really, is just to supply us with hot dogs. <laughs> he does it well. Yes, he does. That's about the only thing he does well. Yasiel Puig leads off the bottom of the fourth for L.A. He has the Dodgers' only hit. They are only base runner so far tonight. And it came off a really good pitch by Kluber. Break a ball down in a way that he just uh, found a way to slap it to right field. In the dirt with a breaking ball. This time it's one and one. 
You know, when I've watched uh, Puig play, a lot of times, how many times have you seen him take the first two pitches and two straight at bats? He's usually very aggressive, so they must uh, McGuire must be getting to work with him, and he's been very patient, especially on a guy he's never faced before. Chop towards short, backhanded by his dribble Cabrera, and he'll throw him out one away. Well, Yasiel Puig certainly burst onto the scene and announced his presence with authority last year. In his first four games, all he did was homer each time. It's like unheard of, isn't it? Yeah. Welcome, huh? They're saying, are you kidding me? What's next? I mean, what can you do to follow that up? Well, he can do it all. He can hit for power. He can throw. He's got a cannon for an arm. He can run. Adrian Gonzalez with a swing and a miss. Struck out his first time up. How about that? He took advantage of the shift. And Gonzalez has at least a single, and he will. Hold with a one out base hit. Yeah, absolutely nothing you could do. He beat the defensive shift right there. Today he does it with a swing. Yesterday he did it with a bunt. And you can see how far Chisholm has to go to pick this ball up. Nobody on that side of the field. And why not? Take that hit all day long. Nobody out. It's only the second hit for the Dodgers. Carlos, there you go. He may be able to give you a few pointers. Up comes Matt Kemp, a ground out to third base his first time up. Lonnie Chisinau has an assist in every inning so far here tonight. And had he been playing at his normal position, he would have had another one an there. assist right there. Yeah, right. Not that Gonzalez would have swung at that pitch. True. With the uh, shift on. Good pitch. And Kemp gave up on it. It's 0 and 2. Yeah, Kemp doesn't like it, but that was a good pitch. Coming inside. That was a little cutter on the inside part. Kemp thought it was going to run in, and it doesn't. It goes the other way. I think his complaint was that he thought low. it was low. Uh -huh. Now the 0-2. Able to lay off that time. Just a bit outside. Outside and now from 0-2 to 3-2. Well, Kemp has been swinging a pretty good bat. He's been hit, he's hit 15 of his last 17. It'll be interesting to see if Mattingly will start Gonzalez because if he does and Kemp doesn't put it in play, you could get a strike him out, throw him out. But does he have confidence in him putting it in play? Let's see. Nope. No. No. And he hits it to third. It's by Chisenhall. Down the line it goes. Gonzalez coming into third, and he'll be held there. Brantley got up to it quickly. And the Dodgers have runners at second and third with only one out now. 
Well, if he chose to start him, he might have been able to score Gonzalez, but he didn't. Figuring Kluber was a strikeout pitcher, and there was that cutter that he left where Kemp could handle it. Gets it by Chisenhall down the line. So that'll be a double, second and third now, just one out. The 21st double for Kemp. It'll give Ethier an opportunity now for the Dodgers to take the lead. Well, but again, remember, he was down 0-2. And worked that count back, got a pitch to handle. This is the second time through the order now, and back-to-back -back hits here in the fourth inning. Only one hit for the Dodgers' first time through the lineup. And here is Andre Ethier trying to give L.A. The lead. Out of play. Ten out of sixteen times with a runner on third and less than two outs. Rogers got an opportunity. So and two again. Now he can go for the punch out. Look at he didn't like it. He may say something. I don't know. But he went in. They wanted it away. And you can see he goes inside with it. Not where Gomes was sitting. He went around, says home plate umpire Angel that. Hernandez. And that is out number two, and it is a big out. Yes. For yes, Corey Kluber. That's he wasted no time. Kemp is gonna, I mean, excuse me, Ethier's gonna have his say with Hernandez as he walks away, but he might have been saying, why don't you get some help on that call? Let's see if he goes. That's a, a slider. And they call it. Let's see from the side. Oh yeah. All right. It was hard to tell, but uh, it certainly looked like he went. That's the second out, and a big out for Kluber. Trying to keep this a nothing nothing game here after four. Swing and a miss by Line and Rebe. Uribe went down swinging back in the second inning. Corey Kluber trying to get out of a jam here in the fourth. Just outside. One and one. Fly ball to center field, and Michael Bourne settling under it makes the catch. Dodgers strand a pair in scoring position, and after four, we have no score in Los Angeles.
Cowboys baseball is brought to you by Sunnyside Toyota, a quarter mile west of the Great Northern Mall on the North Olmstead Auto Mile. By Levin Furniture, for the best deals on furniture and mattresses, shop Levin. And by Kia, visit mykiacleveland.com to learn more. No score, fifth inning here at Dodger Stadium. A pitcher's duel between Corey Kluber and Dan Heron. Rip foul by Lonnie Chisinau. Handcuffed the ball boy. Yes, it did. I'll tell you what, they had a, a ball girl yesterday in Seattle that made a, a whale of a play on a line drive down the third baseline. This guy's got to pick up his standards here on the West Coast. <laughs> You're all over him. Well, yeah. He didn't show me a lot of hustle there. Rip foul again. This one's into the seats, and look out, folks. Puts it down and he puts it in the dirt, but Lonnie wouldn't chase after it. The Indians with just one hit again tonight. And that one was a Michael Bourne two out base hit that he thought had a chance to score a run, but Rojas, the shortstop, made a diving catch. That play was, as a matter of fact, the hit was overturned. He was called out at first base. They went for a review. They overturned it, and that was it again. And I, I can tell you right now, so far I trust Borny when he says he's safe. When he tells the skipper he's oh, safe, yeah. you go back to the video and check it out, because that's what you want your players to do. It's an emotional game, and sometimes you'll get guys that say, "No, I thought I beat it," but they don't. But so far, every time Borny has said something, he was absolutely right. Ronnie leans out of the way. Broke his bat and a liner into the glove of D. Gordon. One away. How many broken bats? At least three. I, I'm thinking four. I'm thinking four. Yeah, he's been able to get inside in the kitchen. And game recap brought to you by your Toyota dealers. Well, there's nothing to recap. Right. And Heron has shut out the Indians, and Corey Kluber has shut out the Dodgers. It's that simple. You know, what's interesting about Dan Heron, Rick, is that you know he's putting up a good season, seven and four, three three ERA, and yet he's given up 16 home runs. He's given up one home run in nine consecutive starts. Right. And, and when you look at that list of guys who've done that, Burt's got to be on there. It's a huh? pretty good picture, no, just in Dodger history. Oh, I got you. Sandy Koufax gave up home runs in ten straight starts. Nothing wrong with being on the same list as Sandy no, Koufax. No, it doesn't matter what the list is. You're right. Being a Rick Roden earlier in his career back in the 1970s gave up home runs in 11 consecutive start starts for the Dodgers. Okay. But the, you know what? If they're solo home runs for the most part, they, they don't really beat you a lot. Now the 0-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. Gomes goes down swinging. Katie, did the Indians see anything in Dan Heron looking at video preparing for this start that did they find a vulnerable spot? A vulnerable spot, Matt, but the reason he's so good, you guys talked about what difference a Dan Heron pitcher is now than before, is he uses the small parts of the plate. He'll work it in and out to both righties and lefties. Assistant hitting coach Matt Cotero said, basically, you got to go in there and be ready to hit and make him refine the zone to get it back into the middle. Well, as a hitter, I think what, the, what you say is you try and cut the plate in half. You either look inside or you look outside, and, and you t up until you get to two strikes. Uribe couldn't make the play. No big deal. Rojas does. He's been everywhere tonight for the Dodgers. And now Dan Heron has set down seven Indians hitters in a row.
from just beyond Dodger Stadium here in Los Angeles as we go to the bottom of the 15. A reminder to text your photos to us using the hashtag STO fan photo for a chance to have one of your pictures shown during our telecast. It's all courtesy of AT&T. Well, we continue to rock along here in L.A., but no score as we go to the bottom of the fifth. It will be the bottom third of the L.A. order due up. A.J. Ellis, Miguel Rojas, and Dan Heron. He said, uh, what, last time we were here, 2008? Yeah. I'll tell you what, this sound system reminds me a lot of when we go to Oakland. Yeah, it's got you know, that old school, just one big giant yeah. bank of speakers and let it and rip. They let it rip, and their, their uh, PA guys sound a lot alike. Yeah. And they look like uh, total opposites, the two guys. But, mm -hmm. Boy, you can hear the, the music, and they, it gets loud here. The Los Angeles uh, Dodgers PA announcer is a school teacher. But yeah, a, one of his students, John Q, I mean, he's still going to school. He's a teacher with the voice of God, though. Yes, he is. Very deep voice. Also does the uh, Clippers games out here for basketball. A.J. Ellis leading off for the Dodgers. Grounded to third. His only time up back in the second inning. A little bit inside. It's 2-0. and oh. Luber will lead off for the Indians when we go to the sixth inning. His counterpart due up third here in the fifth. I'll tell you, both these guys are matching zeros. Kluber has four strikeouts, hasn't walked anybody, but has given up three hits. Heron has struck out four, has walked one, and given up only one hit. Hit to third base. There's your boy again. Lonnie well, Chisinau's had a busy night. And he's been up to the task. Time once again for a Mazda game break. Here's Al. Number 72, Miguel Rojas. You know, I find it. A little weird that the, you know the all-star games in Minnesota this year and Minnesota's in our division we have yet to play at Target Field and we will not play until after the all-star game this year will be our first trip to Minnesota are you implying that there is some conspiracy in effect <laughs> here to keep the Indians away from Target well, Field until I, after the all-star no game? I didn't mention that but I just find it a little weird we played it just about everybody in baseball except Minnesota in Minnesota it is sort of strange as Dribble Cabrera scoops it up and Rojas retired for out number two. Conspiracy. <laughs> well, hopefully we have a, an Indian or two that we can send to Minnesota and do a scouting report in that ballpark for us. Whether it be Michael Brantley. And yeah, I mean, I. Okay, I'll be shocked if Michael Brantley's not on the American League All Star team. However, I also think the guy on the bump tonight deserves a nod. Yeah, and Corey Kluber has pitched exceptional. I mean, he's top six in strikeouts, 309, very respectable ERA. Well, watching him pitch all year, you're right. And he had a couple starts earlier in the year where two blown saves that he had wins going. Yeah. Very easily could have nine, ten wins in this season. Last five starts after an Indian's loss. That's the impressive thing. He has been the best pitcher on this team, bar none. Swing and a miss from his counterpart, Dan Heron. See, I would agree with that because we've had, a, had an opportunity to watch him make his starts every fifth day. Yeah. And he has been dynamite. The 1 1. A little bit outside. Aaron, as I mentioned earlier, had a pretty good idea what he's doing at the plate. Well, I'm sure they got a little 
friendly wager going on with the hitters that they have over there. Their pitchers are pretty good hitters. Sometimes you don't look at the, at the numbers like Granke, he hit 300 mm -hmm. last year. Kershaw can hit. But there's three guys, three of their starters have five hits, and Beckett has four. So I'm sure there's a little friendly wager going on amongst those guys to see who leads the team in hitting as far as pitchers go. The kind of money those guys have, I'm sure yeah. there's a few <laughs> wagers going on. 2-2 two -two is up and in, a full count. <laughs> They're right there with us. <laughs> Now the payoff pitch. Aaron did well just to get well, wood on that one. And, and the thing of it is, to me, that's a successful at bat anyway, because at least you're making Kluber work here. Follow up a 3 2 pitch, you make him throw a few pitches. Hopefully, you can tire him out. Because you know he certainly doesn't want to walk the pitcher. He hasn't walked anybody all night long. 74th pitch of the night. Little chopper, Kluber off the mound. Yeah, make him it. run. Make Santana him run. does. There you go. He'll take it himself. And the Dodgers go one, two, three. So five in the books. No score in L.A. Saturday, a full day of MLB action beginning with the Diamondbacks taking on the Braves on Fox Sports 1. Then it's baseball night in America on Fox. Nelson Cruz and the Orioles take on the defending world champion Red Sox. Our MLB doubleheader begins Saturday at 3.30 Eastern on FS1 and continues at 7 on Fox. Dan Heron has mixed his pitches very well. He has stayed out of the middle part of the plate. He has pounded the edges and he has broken some bats. He had that little comeback fastball out of his four strikeouts. Three have been called. One has been swinging, and that was the one swinging right there. So I'll tell you what, this guy rejuvenated his career. He was with the Washington Nationals last year and had a record under 500. Corey Kluber looks at the ball outside. Kluber laid down a sacrifice bun his first time up. Upstairs. Yeah, he was 10 and 14 last year with Washington with a 467. So he has turned it around and revived his career. And a guy that always gives you 200 innings. He goes out there, never misses a start. They went out and they signed him for a one year deal. They gave him about $10 million. And I'll tell you what, he's paying dividends for him. Swing 
Smash to short. And Rojas able to throw out Kluber one away. Kluber he swings it nose. well, doesn't he? He sure does. He holds his own. He is not shy about letting it rip. Well, the best deal in town for families is the Key Bank Kids value ticket. Each kid receives $15 for free to use on concessions or merchandise. You can visit Indians.com slash kids value and purchase your tickets. You know, Rick, I was thinking as you were talking about Dan Heron and, you know, the way he's sort of remade himself as a pitcher, who better to oversee that process than Rick Honeycutt, who right. yesterday coincidentally celebrated his 60th birthday. But he pitched 21 years in the big leagues. So at some point, I'm sure Rick Honeycutt had to go through the process of making adjustments and changing myself as a pitcher. And he's been here with the Dodgers for a number of years, about 12 years as a pitching coach. So and they've had great ERAs when he's been here. So maybe he did help Heron, you know, just say, okay, i got to change if I want to be successful at this level. Bounced in front of the plate. I think it. I think it, it has to help as a pitcher. You know, when you've when you've done it a certain way, and now you're getting to that point where okay, the velocity's not quite there. Guys are wearing me out a little bit. To have a guy who said, "Hey, you know what? I made that change." Right. And I ended up pitching another eight, ten, whatever, however many more years, to kind of show you the way, and to tell you it's okay. And, and you're a veteran pitcher, but yeah, you have to buy into it. But you're right. I mean, he's got the resume to do that. And, you know, Honeycutt, a left-handed pitcher, although Heron's right, it doesn't matter. You still have to do certain things. It, what do we say? We always say it's a game of adjustments, and you have to adjust. I don't care if you're a rookie, you're a veteran. If you want to stay around the game, you continually have to change. I guess it's, the interesting thing, too, is that in, in Honeycutt's case, he went from starter to essentially in the back half of his career, he converted out to the bullpen. So he can help guys who, who are maybe making that shift as well. Because there's uh -huh. always a guy who, hey, guy, you're not cutting it as a starter yeah. anymore. What do you think about the bullpen? Well, <laughs> when you pitch for 20 years, yeah, you've done just about everything. Bourne lifts one in the air right field. Yasiel Puig makes the catch. Two down. Well, the Indians just haven't been able to square up a ball. The hardest ball hit was Carlos Santana, who right. he hit one on the screws back in the fourth inning, but Ethier was able to make the easy catch in center field. Other than that, Rick, they haven't it's been a lean two yeah. days. You go back to yesterday in Seattle and tonight here, yes, just two hits in the two ball games. I've heard that before where you face a guy and He's so good he puts you in the slump for a week. Is there any anything to that or is that just sort of hyperbole? Maybe, uh, I think a knuckleballer could do that to you. You know, maybe mess your swing up a little bit. But now I think every day is different and it shouldn't affect the whole team. But you can. I mean, at this level, you can run into some guys that can shut you down. And you have to give credit sometimes to the pitchers. <laughs> well, the Indians... Are doing a lot of tipping their cap tonight because Dan Aaron has shut them out through six.
bottom of the sixth here in Los Angeles. It will be the top of the order for the Dodgers. D. Gordon, Yasiel Puig, and Adrian Gonzalez. And Corey Kluber will be going through the lineup now for the third time tonight. He's given up three hits. Dan Heron has given up just one. Mind you, the Indians were one hit yesterday by Felix Hernandez in Seattle. But Kluber is pitching a gem for Cleveland. Yeah, both these pitchers are locked into a really good pitcher's duel. Actually, only one opportunity, and that was for the Dodgers back in the fourth inning where they had second and third and one out. Kluber came back and struck out Andre Ethier when needed. Got Uribe to pop out to center and squelch that little rally. Yeah, and the Indians, even though they have just one hit, that that one hit nearly gave them the lead back in the third yes, inning. Born, sure did. Michael Bourne, a ground ball up the middle. Nice stop by Rojas. It was an infield hit, had to be overturned by replay, but if it gets by him, the Indians score. Yep. Carlos oh. Santana with a nice scoop at first That's base. That's the guy you want off the bases right there, the speedster. And Kloops has been typical Corey Kluber. He as well has stayed out of the plate and has mixed a nice variety of sliders, cutters, two seam fastballs, and his four seamer as well. That's the punch out he had there. That man on third and less than two outs. Now yeah. he'll face Yasiel Puig. We've become accustomed to watching him and expecting him to do this now almost every time out, haven't we? Yeah. I mean, it's fun to it's fun to think like that. I'm sure he likes you to think like that because I think the team thinks the same way. Anytime he toes the rubber, they got a really good chance to win. I mean, Rick, so much so that. You know, when he's had a couple of games this year where he's given up three or four runs, you're, you're, what's wrong? What's yeah. wrong with Kluber? Give up three, four runs. It's well, it's it's a it's a nice way to feel. They expect you to be the best, and I think Corey feels the same way. He expects himself to go out there and be the best and compete. He would expect no less. He's a tough competitor, a quiet guy. What did you call him? I said the silent assassin. <laughs> Very competitive. The calm, cool, silent assassin. <laughs> that looked like a pretty good pitch. Not called a strike, though, and it's two and one. Now, Indians assistant director of baseball information, Court Barry Tripp, locked me up with a good one today. He asked. What does Corey Kluber and Tommy Two Tone have in common? Tommy Two Tone, the musical group from the 80s. Oh, okay. Kluber, born in 86, his record is seven and five with an ERA of 309. Eight, six, seven, five, 309. He's got. <laughs> he's got. He's got too much time on his hands. <laughs> High fly ball to center field and Michael Bourne. Settles under it. Two down. Wow, court. Yeah. Very good. Well played. Two down for Adrian Gonzalez, who had the base hit in the fourth inning. And it it was just a case where Lonnie Chisinau had shifted over and Gonzalez broke his bat and just Hit one up the third baseline where there was no defense, just as he did yesterday in their game against St. Louis with nobody on base. He bunted up the third baseline with that shift on to get himself aboard.
Outside corner it's called nice, strike two nice and one. 2-0 pitch. Little cutter. You get into a game like this and the hitter gets into a 2-0 count, he's looking for a pitch he can drive. And that uh, backdoor cutter is not one you can drive. But he made a mistake there. And he might have beat the shift for extra bases. Yeah, he, he got too much of the plate. So Gonzalez with a two out double here in the sixth inning. Yeah, you'll see the location. This is the one pitch that came on the inner part of the plate on that cutter. The 2 0 pitch before that was in an excellent spot that Gonzalez took. But he's got the count in his favor, so he's looking for something he can drive. And he did. He drove that ball into the hole and got all the way to the wall. But it's a two-out double, his 19th of the year. And they have one more opportunity now with two outs to try and score. And it will be Matt Kemp who doubled his last time up. And you mentioned after an 0-2 count, he had uh, Kemp down in that at-bat. Pulls it on the ground to third. Chisholm Hall scoops it up. Beautiful. Flips it over. And the inning is over. So Lonnie Chisholm Hall has been a stalwart defensively tonight at third. And Corey Kluber just continues to throw up zero. Seventh inning and a look in at Dodger Stadium from our Panini's overstuffed cam. L.A. has been on a tear of late. They closed the gap on San Francisco. This month they were down nine and a half games. And they began the day in a virtual dead heat with San Francisco. Yeah, they did it in a hurry, didn't they? And San Francisco's uh, off tonight. They don't have a ball game, so if the Dodgers do win, they can go into sole possession. They've done a nice job uh, as far as attendance here tonight. They're just under two million people already at home, and 40. This is date number 43. Which is ballpark seats over 50,000. Boy, the White Sox got rained out again. How many rainouts have they had this year? Well, Seemed like a bunch. Well, Detroit has too, but. No, oh, you're right. Detroit's the team that's got the most. Michael Brantley, a ground ball right at D. Gordon. And that is out number one here in the seventh. Well, another Sugardale Dollar mm -hmm. Dog mm -hmm. Night, mm -hmm. Thursday, July mm -hmm. 10th. The Indians will take on the New York Yankees. Come on out to the ballpark, Dollar Dogs. Jeter making his last appearance in Cleveland in his career. Hall of Fame career. Come on out, visit Indians.com for your ticket details. 
Yeah, it was it was Detroit that had all the rainouts, not Chicago. Well, but we have one to make up. They they played 78 games. The the Tigers well now with the win tonight, uh, 79. So they're two, three behind us. Carlos Santana taking a strike. Hit hard to first right into the tracks yeah. of Gonzalez. Two down. So he's hit the two hardest balls of the night for the Indians, but nothing and to show for him. Playing either one right on the line, taking the double away. He didn't even have to move. He just went to the backhand <laughs> side. I mean, he took a half a step and catches it. That ball had to be fouled. See how close he is to the line? That should have been a double down the line, but not where he was playing. Now here's Jason Kipnis who has been called out on strikes both times tonight. He's trying to bone his way out. I don't blame fun. him. <laughs> Heron has treated him. Pretty rough. He's made a couple of just nasty pitches with two strikes. Well for the Indians in their last 18 and two thirds innings. They have not scored and they had three hits. You know, and that's a situation there. If Kipnis, he does, for some reason, let's say he's successful with that bunt, then you try to steal second base. You just can't try and do that and then stay on first. Rick foul. That guy hurt hurt a few digits on his hand trying to grab that one. You get out of the way of those. Pick them up when they stop rolling. <laughs> trying to play it off. No, I'm fine. I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> I can't feel my thumb. <laughs> now the 2-2 two -two to Kipnis. Three. And for the third time tonight, he is rung up by Angel Hernandez. And the Indians go 1-2-3. And that is 13 in a row set down. By Dan Heron, who is spinning a one hit shutout. And we've reached the seventh inning stretch brought to you by Spitzer Auto World. Life is hard, buying a car shouldn't be. Bottom of the seventh inning, still no score. And as promised earlier, it's Miller time. Brought to you by Miller Lite. Back in the fourth inning, Matt Kent doubled down the line, and then it was Andre Ethier taking a call, third strike, and Juan Uribe flying to center. That's been the only real scoring threat tonight for the Dodgers.
Corey Kluber working on a four hit shutout. Andre Ethier leading off. And a breaking ball in for a strike. This was the big out that he was able to get back in the fourth inning. Not either. He didn't waste any time. He came right after second and third and got that strikeout on three pitches. That's hit pretty well. Deep left, Brantley on the move. Can't make the play. It's off his glove, and Ethier's around second on his way to third. Cabrera's relay not in time. He held on to it. And a leadoff triple for Andre Ethier. You won't see many times, if ever, that Michael Brantley gets leather on it and doesn't make a kick. Yeah, I agree. He had a long way to go. And it might have been on his backhanded side, but let's take another look and see if he was outstretched or what happened here. Not an easy play. Right off the end. Yep. I mean, he had a good beat on it. He ran it over there. He thought it was in the glove. You see him look down in the glove. He knew the wall was approaching. But Ethier, I give him credit. He wasn't going to be stopping at second base. He knows it's much more important to get to third than second. Ethier, his third triple of the year. And boy, the Dodgers in business now with nobody out. Juan Uribe with the infield in. 0 for 2 on the night. Pulls it foul. Indians bullpen scrambles into action. Andre Ethier at third base. Nobody out. Side one and one. Uribe checks down with his third base coach, Lorenzo Bundy. Atchison and Crockett getting loose in the Indians' bullpen. A one one. Uribe up the middle. Cabrera flags it down, looks the runner back. And he throws him out, one away. Well, they weren't going on contact, obviously, there, because if you do, you're going to be running, and Cabrera was going to his left. And watch, you can see, with nobody out. Now, with one out here, I would, I would assume they're going to go on contact. With nobody out, they're going to make it go through. So the infield will stay the same. But that's a ball there where if you're going on contact, you're going to make, have to make Cabrera make a tremendous throw right on the money and get a tag. But the infield will stay there. And I'll bet he's going on contact this time. And A.J. Ellis twice tied is grounded to third base. And I don't know what was wrong with that. It looked like a strike, but it's called ball one. Well, and if for some reason you go on contact and it's hit directly at one of the infielders, your job, if you're Ethier, is to try and get into a rundown to try and let that hitter get himself into scoring position, you know, just in case for the next hitter if it's right at a defender. Swing and a miss in the count one and one. Ellis asking Angel Hernandez if that ball was a strike, and it was. It was a nice slider away. He's going to have to take that pitch to right field if he wants to put it in play. Don Mattingly, Dodger skipper, a tremendous hitter during his career. Yes, he was. The 1 1 pitch. Oh, good slider. Beautiful. He's going to see one more of those. This one. May get expanded. Let's take a look at this on our Nissan pitch tracker. It is a perfect catch. Good slider. See, he swung and missed the last time, and Kluber came back with the same one. What he'll do now, probably move it out a little bit more. He's shaking off whatever Gomes puts down. 
And the one two in the dirt. Good block by Gomes. Yeah, you know when you're a catcher and you call that breaking ball and he's down in the count. He may bounce it trying to get him to chase it. So you're going to have to block it. And if he swings, you throw to first base. He was able to hold up. Nicely done by Gomes. He needs to make one more quality pitch right here. And the 2 2. Almost chased after it, but he held up. No, well, that was the cutter. They want to check. Now he'll come back and he'll go with the slider. Because even if you walk him, you've got the double play in order. He's going for the strikeout, is what he's going for. He doesn't want him to put it in play whatsoever. Yes, indeed. He came back to the slider. Now you're going to get a pinch hitter. Ellis thought he had first base on the walk. Instead, Angel Hernandez says not so fast. This is going to be on McDonald's. I'm loving it. And how about that? And that is right on the corner. He threw the cutter to the pitch before. He laid off him. And now he goes with more break. And gets the call in. Now, Kluber a chance to get out of this inning. Going to get a pinch hitter here, and it's going to be Hanley Ramirez. Boy, what a job by Kluber, huh? He gets out of this. It'll be a Houdini act. Hanley Ramirez batting 272 on the year. He's one for three as a pinch hitter. And out comes pitching coach Mickey Calloway. Now, here's the interesting thing, Rick. I, I understand National League different style of play and you you make more moves and bottom line is Don Mattingly only has one left-handed bat on his bench but you pinch hit a right-handed bat for a right-handed bat obviously because he feels like Ramirez is just a much better hitter than Rojas. Well he is. It's just that Rojas is much better shortstop than Ramirez so that's why he's playing in this ball game. And with Heron on the mound a lot of ground balls you need the good defense. Now you're coming up this guy can hit. And when you're Clover, they're not even going to pitch to him. So go ahead. He's going to, they're, they're wasting their time. He's going to see four pitches. And he'll be on first base with the intentional walk. I like it. And then he'll go at the left hand yes. hitting Clint Robinson, who's in the on deck circle to pinch it for the pitcher. And then you get Heron out of the ball game and you could get into the Dodgers bullpen. The first walk, and it'll be an intentional by. Kluber and the Indians lead the league in intentional walks, but this is a, this is one I like. Brian Wilson warming for L.A. And this will be, I mean, these pitches hardly count, but he's he's at 100 pitches now on the night. But I'd be shocked if Terry Francona went to the left-hander Crockett no, here. This and is. You got to give Kluber the opportunity. It's his game. He, yeah, it's his game. He got this far with the man on third and nobody out to get his two outs. He deserves the right to stay in there and get out of the inning. If he gives up the hit, it's different, but he yeah. earned the right. This is his ball game, no question. Barry Francona talking things over with his bench coach, Brad Mills, as they look at the matchups and position the defense accordingly. I mean, here's a guy, Clint Robinson, who we've never seen before. He's right, one for three this year. Well, I'll take my chance with Kluber. Let's go. This would be a, an unbelievable job by Corey Kluber to get out of this inning. Man on third and nobody out. Robinson has played in the big leagues before with Kansas City, but not a lot of big league action. And Kluber gets ahead with a first first pitch strike. Clint Robinson played four games with Kansas City two years ago in the big leagues. Lifts this one to left. 
near the line. Long run, Brantley can't get to it. And he flips over the side, and he's going to have to buy a ticket. He's there. out of play. I'm guessing he he still got a, maybe a bit of a slow burn going. Not that he didn't give maximum effort, but that he just didn't quite pull in that leadoff triple by Andre Ethier. Look how low that wall is there. Yeah. You know what? That that alone, low bridge right there. So you just go over the top of it easily. And you don't want to hurt anything. Run into it with the thigh or get a big deep thigh bruise. Loop one strike away. The 0 2 pitch. Just a little bit low, and Robinson able to lay off there. We are in the bottom half of the seventh inning, no score. Ramirez was intentionally walked. Ethier, who tripled to lead off the inning, still at third. And the one two from Kluber. Ooh, just missed inside. Wanted to come in and have a little bit of that comeback fastball. Don't know if it came back. No, that was the, he threw that just a little too hard. Didn't have as much comeback as he wanted. Now Corey with a 2 2. Low again, full count. And able to lay off those sliders that have been low. The runner at first base, Hanley Ramirez, will be off on this 3 2 pitch. In up the middle and through, and the Dodgers have the lead. Wow. Clint Robinson. Well, he wasn't going to walk him. He gave it and threw him a fastball. And he hit it right up the middle, right down on the ground. He wasn't going to walk him. He felt that might have been out of the game. So a huge two out base hit. He came so close. Had him down on the count 0 2. Robinson worked his way back into that. His first major league hit. How about that? It gives him a 1 0 lead. In the bottom half of the seventh inning. So a big hit. He challenged him, went right there. He stayed on the baseball, took it up the middle. I don't know if it was a cutter or a straight fastball. It looked like he might have tried to cut it. Just his seventh major league at bat. And in a pinch hit situation, Clint Robinson delivers the RBI single to give the Dodgers a one to nothing lead. And that will mark the end of the night for Corey Kluber. He goes six and two thirds innings. He gives up six hits and just one run, but he is knocked out of the game now. And our Cleveland Clinic call to the bullpen will be for left hander Kyle Crockett. He's coming on when we come back.
Well, the Dodgers take a 1-0 lead here in the bottom half of the seventh with a two-out base hit right up the middle. And it was a clutch hit, the first major league hit for Robinson, who is standing at first base. Take a quick look at our AT&T fan photo of the game. Remember, you can tweet your photos to us using the hashtag STO fan photo for a chance to have it shown during one of our games. It's courtesy of AT&T. Kyle Crockett coming on. Two on and two out. And he'll be facing D. Gordon. L.A. leading it now one to nothing. Also, while we were away, Hanley Ramirez removed from the game and a pinch runner, Carlos Triunfil, is at second base now. Two and on the count on Gordon, who is 0 for 3. Clint Robinson, his first major league hit. In just his seventh big league at bat. The first four of which came two years ago with Kansas City. Robinson had been 0 for 2 as a Dodger in his three games. Boy, did he deliver in the clutch here tonight. He was down 0 2 in that count. The only left handed back. bat on the bench, too. His ability to lay off those back, those sliders. Earned him a fastball and he put it in play and got the hit. When we talked earlier, Rick, I said, last time the Dodgers lost a series was here at home, and the White Sox came out here and held them to one run in back to back games. They've held them to one run here tonight, but the Indians have yet to score. We'll go to the eight. One nothing now, Los Angeles. the Cleveland Indians and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cleveland Indians.
One nothing now. The Dodgers lead it. And we are headed to the eighth inning. New pitcher now for Los Angeles is going to be Brian Wilson. A reminder to stay tuned for Indians Live. Brought to you by Conrad's Tire Express until the car cares coming up next. Wilson's 35th appearance of the year. This guy was a tremendous closer for the uh, San Francisco Giants. Known more for his beard and somewhat eccentric behavior as much as his ability to close out games. Doesn't have the same stuff, though, Rick, after a couple, arm a couple arm injuries. Yeah. Right, that's right. He's had the surgeries, but he's battled back, and he throws that little cutter or slider inside to left-handers. Back out of play. Back over the screen. So Dan Heron snapped his string of allowing a home run. Nine consecutive starts by going seven one hit shutout innings. Did he ever? The hit he gave up was an infield hit. Just off the mark, maybe a tad high or wide. Lonnie trying to get the Indians offense jump started here in the eighth inning. Instead, he strikes out one away. Joe Hayden and his friends are going to have a celebrity softball game Thursday, July 17th at Classic Park in Eastlake. Photos, autographs, it's all there. Log on to captainsbaseball.com for information. There's Jan Gomes 0 for 2 tonight. A ground out, a strikeout. He's off. It's low and away. They have J.P. Howell, the left-hander, throwing in their bullpen. Out of play. Now the first base side. Just a bit outside, and it's two and two. Ryan Wilson essentially missed the last two years. Well, that ball was off the plate with that Tommy John surgery. Pitched in two games in 2012 and a handful of games last year. Ryan Gomes is out number two. Another broken bat. Well, Wilson had a run there of four consecutive years where he saved 36 or more games with the San Francisco Giants.
Low ball one. Murphy walked in the third, grounded out his last time up. And while he doesn't have the stuff he once had, the Dodgers feel like he has something that is also very important, and that's playoff experience. He has not allowed an earned run in 16 career playoff appearances. Now, the one thing you, you bring when you've been a closer before, even though you have had the surgery, is that toughness and that attitude when you're out on the mound in situations where you don't give in. So if he ever does get his great stuff back, which pitchers certainly do after Tommy John surgeries, still has pretty good control. Swisher on deck. Should Murphy reach? Now the 2 2 pitch. Weak ground ball hit to short. Tree unfill. Throws him out. Indians go 1 2 3 again, and that's 16 in a row. Bottom of the eighth inning, one to nothing, Los Angeles. And why is it one to nothing? Our Wendy Slow Mo replay reveals Clint Robinson's first major league hit, a pinch hit, two out RBI single on a 3 2 delivery right up the middle. Playing Andre Ethier with the game's only run. First major league hit. He made the most of it, didn't he? My goodness. Cody Allen coming on now to face Yasiel Puig, Adrian Gonzalez, and Matt Kemp. Two teams, same game time tomorrow night. As Justin Masterson will go for the Indians against Josh Beckett of LA. Boy, you know, you talk about Clayton Kershaw, you almost forget about Josh Beckett through a no hitter earlier this year. Right, in Philadelphia, of all places. We'll be facing him tomorrow. Here's the 1 0 to Puig and a high fly ball, shallow right. In comes Murphy, out goes Kipnis. 
And the second baseman has it one away. In game box score brought to you by Hyundai. Not much to talk about on either side, really. Dodgers have six hits, but it was the leadoff triple by Andre Ethier that was just off the end of Michael Brantley's glove on the warning track. That put Corey Kluber in a tough spot. He retired the next two batters, intentionally walked bench hitter Hanley Ramirez, but then Robinson, we showed you, got the two out RBI hit. Josh Becker will start tomorrow for LA. Justin Masterson got a little extra time dealing with a knee issue. We'll go for the Indians. <laughs> Henley Jansen getting ready in the Dodger bullpen. Their closer. As Gonzalez fouls one back, 0 and 2. It's one of those situations where <laughs> you might think the hitters are at a disadvantage because they've never seen these closers and haven't faced them very often, if at all, maybe spring training. On the other hand, maybe it's a good thing because there isn't any history. There's no. There's no self doubt. Oh boy, I've never gotten a hit off this guy. Or boy, this guy owns us. Yeah, you're going to have to go up there and see it and give it a rip. That's pretty much how they go about it. When you get in the interleague playing, you haven't, you don't have much of a history against anybody. Until you get in that box and see it for yourself. You let your eyes do the judgment. Yeah, Cody Allen has Gonzalez down 0 2. He's singled and doubled tonight. Following that one off over toward the tribe dugout. And the O2. High pop. On the infield. And as Dribble Cabrera makes the grab two down. And up comes Matt Kemp. The Dodgers left fielder, number 27, Matt Kemp. Kemp with a double back in the fourth inning. He's one for three on the night. He's tried to pull the ball every time up. That's good for Allen if he can throw that pitch right there. The good curve ball that he has. We hope a guy tries to pull that pitch. A little bit low with it. <laughs> now the two one offering. Broken back ground ball to short as Dribble Cabrera has it. Throws him out. Last chance for the Indians coming up. They trail one to nothing here in Los Angeles.
one nothing. The Dodgers lead it. And we head now to the ninth inning. Stay tuned for Indians Live, brought to you by Conrad's Higher Express and Total Car Care. For Los Angeles, they'll go to their closer now. Big Kenley Jansen. He stands six foot five, 265 pounds. And this 26-year-old has saved 24 out of 27 coming into tonight. Yep, second in the majors with his 24 saves. Hasn't faced the Indians at all in his career. He's going to get a pinch hitter, Nick Swisher. Going to come on to hit for the pitcher. It'll be the top of the lineup, Bourne and Cabrera to follow. So important. If you can get that leadoff man aboard. One run game starting that ninth inning. All right, now the Indians will take anything they can get. 16 Indians hitters in a row have gone down since the only hit of the game, Michael Bourne. His infield single back in the third with two outs. One and one to count as Jansen lets it fly. That fastball missed inside. Probably well, about as much as a shift as we've seen from LA tonight defensively with Swisher up. Half swing into the glove of. Uribe at third base. So even with a quasi shift, the Indians still hit it right at a defender. And they've had a few of those tonight. Center fielder number 24, Michael Bourne. Keys to the game brought to you by Akron Children's Hospital. Corey Kluber was, it was great. as advertised once again, but right. the Indians offensively absolutely stifled. Well, and I think uh, Dan Heron did not make any mistakes. He went his seven innings. According to our research guru, Mike Pacta, the Indians have never in the last 100 years been held to one hit shutouts in back to back games. Wow. How about that? And according to the guys at Stats Inc., Mike asked them to check. Has anybody ever been involved in three consecutive one hit games, right. which the Indians are on the verge of potentially being involved in? And only the 2003 New York Mets, according to their research, but the Mets won two out of those three games. Yeah. It's still hard to believe three consecutive one hit. Efforts, no and matter which way it, you look at. It. Of course, it's not over at this no. point. Indians no, could not. still change all that. Two-one pitch to Bourne, taking a strike. It's easy to pile on the Indians. I think after what happened yesterday, the bottom line is that Dan Heron. Brian Wilson and now Kenley Jansen have executed extremely well. Two down. But how many times did we see Heron paint a corner to get a strikeout or, or get a jam, break a bat? Doesn't matter how hard you throw. The key to pitching is getting out, keeping the ball off the center of the bat, and he did that all night tonight. He painted. A lot of different ways to go about your business. Saw two different ways yesterday with uh, Hernandez and today with Heron. Well, it's all comes down to his dribble Cabrera to try to extend this game for the Indians. 
And all they need is a base runner. I mean, that's it's a, it's still only a one to nothing game. And as Jansen delivers high for ball one. And at this point, boy, if you can get Michael Brantley to the plate, you still feel like you've got a fighting chance in this one. Cabrera breaks his bat, pops it into shallow center, out goes Triumfo. He makes the catch, and for the first time in at least 100 years, the Indians have been shut out on just one hit in back to back games. One to nothing is the final score tonight as the Dodgers take the series opener. They go to 48 and 37 on the year. And the Indians fall to 39 and 43. The winning pitcher in this one is going to be Dan Heron. Yeah, he gets the win. He goes to 84. And Jansen gets his 25th save. And boy, you talk about a tough luck loser. Corey Kluber is now 7 and 6 as he gives up just one run in six and two thirds innings here tonight. Time now for our key play of the game, brought to you by KeyBank. Oh, it's coming back in the seventh inning. A leadoff hitter in that inning, Andre Azier. Drives one to left field. Michael Brantley going back. Oh, off his glove, off the webbing. He's going to lead the inning off with a triple. Kluber was able to get the next two outs, but a pinch hitter Robinson comes up, ends up driving it in with two outs, and the only run in the ballgame. That will be our key play.